Okay, now we look into the somewhat enigmatic origins of the endemic guanche to the Canary Islands. The researchers show that they get a closer look to the finding of the origins of the enigmatic guanches and no, they weren't Atlanteans they throw in. The guanches were a white-skinned and fair-haired ab aboriginal people of the Canary Islands with their location so near to North Africa, their origins have long presented a mystery for researchers. Finally, a genetic study was able to link the Guanches to some of their neighbors, at least clearing up some of the questions regarding their family ties. There's a legend which says the Guanches are descendants of the Atlanteans who had survived the submerging of the site because they were on mountain peaks, which were known to, the, to be now as the Canary Islands and it seems to correlate to the idea of Atlantis being out there and how it had gotten flooded over and perhaps this area was much larger before the uh, flooding of the last ice age and the uh, waters reaching up and becoming much higher but a study in 2017 study provided a clear evidence for a hypothesis supported by anthropologists for years that the Guanches are genetically linked to the Berbers and endemic Caucasians of North Africa. Here's a picture of what some of the Guanches might have looked like. So who were the Guanches? Well, Steve Andrews has written that most of our current knowledge of the Guanches history comes from Spanish chroniclers who explained the Guanches were hunter-gatherer tribes who lived a lifestyle much like it was supposed that people lived in the Stone Age. They were known to have lived in cave and huts and have had a few tools with no metalworking because they lived on volcanic islands where there were no metal ores. They made pottery, though they had knowledge of basic farming, farming and foraging uh, from the wild. They also practiced embalming and the mummification of their dead, as is done in Egypt, as well as trepanation of the living, so actual surgeries and things of that nature. The mummies were left in caves, but other Guanche corpses of a lower social standing were buried. Now, here we're looking at one of the mummies of the Guanche, and this one is known as San Andres, which correlates to St. Andrew. So it makes you think weird about the San Andreas fault now, perhaps. But because the Guanches were apparently not very good sailors, they were there was little contact between the people living on different islands and cultural differences arose between those different communities on these seven islands. There was some contact with sailors who came to them, however, and the Romans were one group that enjoyed a trade partnership with these islanders. And by looking at these islands and their separateness but close ties, it's almost a Darwinian thing where you can look and see the slight difference in finches or the other animals that are there and you can see some type of primordial thing. It's also shown that these people had a little bit more of a Cro-Magnon type to their existence and that they had a lot of primordial concepts with them that date back to the earliest of mankind and that these people might have been somewhat of a throwback are an untouched people who had not quite accelerated at the rate of the others in certain aspects by being trapped on this island. Similar things happen around the world though like Australian Aborigines and so on but uh, let's look deeper into this here if we can. Everything changed though when Spanish conquistadors arrived to those islands. Although the islanders put up a tough fight against the invaders their nine kingdoms had fallen all to the Castilian crown by 1496 that dating there becomes important to some of the stories that go along with this which I will show in an upcoming. I'll go into depth on these Guanches. Here I'm showing a genetic connection they've shown. Many of the Guanches who have survived the fighting were sent into slavery. The ones who remained on the islands had to culturally assimilate to the lifestyle and the region uh, and religions of the conquistadors and many of the males were taken out in this uh, 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 fighting aspect of course leaving lots and lots of women. Well, what can geneticists tell us about the Guanches? A 2017 study wasn't the first time genetics came into play when looking for the origins of these Guanche people, but a previous studies 
were less conclusive due to their focus on single genetic markers such as mitochondrial DNA and Y chromosomes. When you add all this together, it shows you something else, though. The 2017 study differed itself by sequencing autosomal DNA from five archaeological Guanche individuals from Grand Canary and the Tenerife sites. The remains were radiocarbon dated to the 7th to 11th centuries AD and found mitochondrial lineages that are common in West Eurasia and North Africa. This is no surprise as the previous genetic studies had similar findings. The more intriguing results came from the three males corresponding to a haplogroup abundant in modern North African populations and especially common in Berber speaking populations of North Africa. And I believe that's you that they're talking about there, although they contain R also but in the euclad and there is actually a separate euclad that's slightly distinct to themselves like 61m i think or something along that line previous research also shown that the guanche language stemmed from similar origins as the languages spoken by berber populations in north africa stone inscriptions created by the guanches depict symbols that are similar to the african tifana alphabet and tifana script especially the numerology and so on When in their, with their data in hand, the researchers of 2017 study concluded that our results show that the Guanches were genetically similar over time and that they display the greatest genetic affinity to extant Northwest Africans, supporting the hypothesis of a Berber-like origin. We also estimate that the Guanches have contributed 16 to 31 percent autosomal ancestry to modern Canary Islanders, here represented by two individuals from Grand Canaria. It seems not all the Guanches share the same genetic situation, though. One interesting individual was found to have a higher proportion of hunter-gatherer-like ancestry from Europe. This has led to the proposal of low-level gene flow from a European source that predates European conquest by quite some dates. Here's a geneticist working on it, actually. Professor Andres Gotherstrom, co-author and director of the Ancient DNA Laboratory at Stockholm University, explained the 2017 findings to FizzOrg. Our analysis showed that a small portion of the genetic ancestry of the Guanches was derived from populations most closely related to European Stone Age farmers. Interestingly, this type of genetic ancestry was introduced to Europe from Anatolia with migrating farmers during the Neolithic expansion around 7,000 years ago, other North African populations having proportions of this ancestry. But it is not yet fully understood how and when it spread across North America. Now, more mysteries of the Canary Islands' first settlers are that no one can say for certain exactly when or how the Guanches arrived at the Canary Islands or how often they had uh, undocumented contact, possibly with outside populations. They apparently had no skill at navigating the seas, though, in larger boats or anything. They didn't have any recognizable boats when they were first encountered by the Spanish in the 15th century, as the researchers admitted in their 2017 paper. It says, although radiocarbon dates on archaeological remains such as charcoal, seeds, and domestic animal bones suggest that people have inhabited the island since the 5th century BC, it remains unclear how many times and by whom the islanders were first settled. And this is an interesting painting here showing you the uh, Guanches and the kings here, which are these people, led into the court here um, of Isabella to Ferdinand, King Ferdinand and Isabella and stuff, and you can see there are definite Caucasians here. Look, they're somewhat cleaned up. I know it looks like they're wearing somewhat of a dress, but back then people wore longer shirts that hung down and so on, and leggings and things. It was a little bit different, although some of these people are shown to have actually had pants and pantaloons. Nonetheless, the 2017 study has allowed several researchers to feel more confident about their belief in the genetic ties between the Guanches and the endemic Caucasian Berber populations in North Africa. The study can be found in the Journal of Current Biology. And again, I will go into the uh, Guanches in a 
upcoming video where we'll go deeper into it. We'll look at the wiki article and then we'll do as I do where we'll expound upon it quite a bit. But uh, just wanted to throw this up there. This just came out the 6th of this month. And uh, so I thought I'd show it with you as something that was somewhat fresh. Like, share, and subscribe, guys, and enjoy. And uh, lots more to come and lots more on these ancient guanches. Peace.